So hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Dia Bill Star cards, and uh, well, we'll be going over like uh, cards and types of effects that are effective against Dia Bill Star and uh, Snake Eyes, as well as in, in general what they do. So starting off with Dia Bill Star, the Black Witch, this card has an effect to special summon itself back um, if it um, leaves the field, I believe. No, if it is sent to the graveyard, uh, then you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card. And uh, every single effect on this is hard once per turn. So, um, yeah. The Abil Star also has an effect to set a Sinful Spoils spell trap directly from your deck. Usually this will be uh, original Sinful Spoils if your opponent doesn't have it. Th this is the primary target. And then the effect of Sinful Spoils Snake Eye is to send one other face-up card. You control to the graveyard special summon one level one fire monster from your hand or deck. And this can be like a, a lot of different cards honestly, but uh, a lot of the time, the card that will be summoned off of this is Snake Eye Ash, and Snake Eye Ash can add a uh, level 1 fire monster from your deck to your hand. So, this can add, for example, a Kurikara, Div Incarnate. <clears throat> so, Kurikara, of course, is um, just going to be able to wipe out like a cash board, no problem, if there is access to this card. But, uh, yeah. Against just like four copies of Kurikara, assuming your opponent's running one in main deck, that kind of hurts a bit, but yeah, not much you can do about this. So the the general idea is that you're going to use either Diabell Star or Normal Summon Ash itself. So three copies of this, three copies of this, and then um, you have copies of Secret of Sinful Spoils. And then uh, original Sinful Spoils as well. So if you consider three copies of this, three of this, three of this, and three of this, that is 12 different one card combos, nine of which are just doable with only special summon, so you can retain your uh, normal summon, which is pretty disgusting. And these guys essentially will just keep spamming out level one bodies and doing a few searches. And th that that's how they essentially set up their end board, so the major choke points are Snake Eye Ash. So, if you were to, for example, Gamma Snake Eye Ash, the entire combo is pretty dead most of the time from this point. There are, like, a lot of potential extenders, I, I guess, like, for example, Snake Eye Urch. Like, assuming you were to Ash on... You, it, it, you were to use Ash Blossom Joe Spring on Snake Eye Ash, then, um, Birch can then special summon itself, and then this can special summon, like, Snake Eye Oak. So, the, the play, I believe, for this is that you would use Poplar, and then you link this off for Link Rebo for extra material, is then um, Poplar will uh, be able to place itself face up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell, and that's a card you can send, so you don't have to send Poplar directly from field. So, there are a lot of little things like this that will uh, essentially allow uh, advantage to be built, and it's all done off of one card. So, overall, pretty strong, right? But, uh, I guess it's worth mentioning that every single snake I hear, I believe, but let me check real fast to make sure that is the case. So, every single one it's not like the exact same aside from Poplar it seems so these three all of them have the effect to send two face-up cards you control to the graveyard including itself and uh, special summon one snake eye monster from your hand or deck the difference between uh, well the difference between these two and birch is that birch can only use this as a quick effect on your opponent's turn. So, kind of similar-ish effects, but uh, yeah. The noticeable thing about this is that they're actually, that despite doing all these searches, you'd think you could drill this, right? Well, 
but let's look for the point where you can droll. I believe the only time you have an effective droll is if we do specifically um, original sinful points. Let's see. Do, do. No. I, I believe it is on normal summon snake eye ash is the only time droll is really an option. Aside from like that exact scenario, I don't think you can uh, really effectively droll. And the reason being, well, uh, they, they don't add the spell traps to the hand. They set them. So Diabellstar sets the sinful spoils, notably not add. So if we actually check the cards that add, which cards actually do add? So we have Snake Eye Ash, which adds a level one fire monster. Okay, and then Oak doesn't do anything like that. And then here, Birch doesn't do anything like that as well. And then Poplar. Poplar allows you to add one Snake Eye spell trap from your deck to your hand. So if we just look at only the Snake Eye cards, essentially the best case scenario you have for your droll is uh, you can deny either Poplar or Ash from searching one card. And that is the only time, I believe, that you can droll effectively, which is actually just painful. So you might be thinking to yourself, but Wanted of the Seekers sin of uh, Sinful Spoils adds a Diabell Star monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Well, it's a quick effect, right? Because it's a quick play spell. So. This can be done in the draw phase, which completely plays around Droll. So add Diabell Star, and then you're free to still do pretty much everything, right? So the the most useful Droll will be against uh, this package is specifically when it's running like a secondary engine. That That's it. If their secondary engine needs to draw, then you're doing better. Well, let's just say, for example, I don't know, you're playing, I don't think this really works, but branded Snake Eye Diabell Star or whatever. So uh, we uh, n normal summon a Luber and then we special summon Diabell Star. So a Luber gets drolled and then uh, Diabell Star, it, 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 it's just not going to do a whole lot. Actually, Droll, still? That was not a good example. I guess uh, maybe Rescue Ace would have been a better example. So if Snake Eye Ash adds uh, Rescue Ace Hydrant, then Hydrant can't add a, a Rescue Ace monster, I guess. So, sure. Droll can still kind of come up, but as you can see, just against this package in general, not that effective because every card here just sets, right? Or just special summons from deck, which aren't things that are drollable. And also, Ash Blossom Joy Spring might not be the best because, you know, the their, their uh, triggers are not just on Special Summon, they're also on Normal Summon as well. So, the noticeable thing is none of these cards are actually just super hard Garnets. Like, for example, Fallen of Albaz is completely useless going first, right? As a uh, branded player, you don't really want to be seeing uh, Fallen of Albaz going first. So, yeah, that that would do nothing in hand, right? But, for example, with uh, Snake Eye Oak, you can just normal summon this to extend up your play still. Then you don't have to search for this, I guess, right? And you can use the material for something else. And that that's still perfectly fine, right? The only one that you really don't want to draw is probably Poplar. But, I mean... It, it's honestly not that bad to draw, like, Poplar, for example, because you can just send Poplar from hand for, like, Diabell Star, and then summon it back later with Oak, for example, and then that will trigger Poplar to search anyways, and you don't have to waste your normal summon on this. So, a lot of um, versatility, and it's... N none of these cards are really bricks, aside from, uh, kind of Flamberg. But, like, once again, you just send Flamberg to the graveyard and you're doing fine. So, yeah, the primary uh, kind of lines you're doing are IP lines. So, move IP 
and then you just make something with IP. Uh, the most common one is probably Appalosa, and you also have uh, Promethean Princess, which is pretty strong, so you can destroy a special summoned monster that your opponent special summons, you know. And then uh, there is also, I guess, just the fact that this is all a one card combo and you can't get a good amount of like interactions off of this. That in a, itself is pretty strong. So yeah, we, it's not like super easy to go over the lines here, but essentially, um, if you get any of the one card starters, so well, a lot of them are actually technically one card starters. So sinful spoils is a one card, the Abel Star. So that's uh, three, six. Then this is actually technically also a one card starter. But uh, you, you probably don't need to run that many because you already have enough good ones, right? And this one would require your normal summon. So, that's like... Well, this isn't as good as Ash in terms of being like a normal summon. So, we have... Um, 3, 6, 9, 12... Uh, And then you, you do run some of these, so that is like uh, 14 one cards that are all one card combos that lead into this, and uh, like 70% of them or something? No, 80% of them do, do not require your uh, normal summon, which is just pretty strong. So let's say we start off our turn with something like normal summon uh, Alistair. We could do that, and then do this full, full thing, just for example. So, uh, yeah. These cards are pretty strong, generically, and noticeably, of course, they do not lock you or anything like that. So, that that's why Ideal Bill Star is so strong, I, I guess. So, of course, super heavy weakness into Maxi, because you do need to do uh, all your special summons to uh, actually build advantage. But um, aside from that, we'll now go over some of the weaknesses. But I mean, inboard wise, you're going to expect to be seeing like Lamberge, uh, Promethean Princess, and IP Mask. And um, Promethean Princess in the Graveyard Pop Emblem Whale, and Special Summon like a uh, Link 2 as well. So uh, another Link 2 can be put into the graveyard if you really want and of course there's uh also this you can use like uh sunlight gray sunlight wolf to uh kind of reset your combo pieces and stuff and i mean sometimes just add ash back from the graveyard to the hand if it is relevant so uh now on to the actual counters for this the easiest counter just drop a shifter Why does so have three copies? so noticeably um every single um the bell star card that uh, they all send to the graveyard for cost so if you are not allowed to send to the graveyard for cost then the cards are not even activatable so shifter and like just macro like effects are pretty strong in general and then uh if you uh drop of course maxi you're doing pretty well uh there as well and then we have cards like deck lockdown so droll of course is not like super effective but deck lockdown is very effective so uh you cannot uh add cards from the deck to the hand which stops every single search that gets done aside from uh the bell stars effect to set a sinful spoils but uh, most of the Sinful Spoils cards do not matter, aside from the uh, Trap, which is kind of an Omni Negate, but it is not a Counter Trap. That one is kind of weird, but yeah. Uh, aside from that play, which not everyone's running to begin with, the uh, Trap, so... Uh, monsters cannot be Special Summoned from the main deck, which a lot of the cards want to be doing this effect, right? So just Special Summoning 
a snake eye from deck or a fire monster from your deck deck lockdown completely stops this and not of course not all decks can play deck lockdown equally but just for example, if I were to be playing super heavy samurai, I do my full combo, I special summon Aurorodon, I uh, get out a bunch of Omni Gates, slap down deck lockdown, I'm already done all my searching, right? And I won't be special summoning any monsters from my main deck anymore, nor will I be uh, adding any cards from my, my uh, deck to the hand, so I, I can just activate lockdown and I'm just solid, right? And... Uh, other cards that are effective include uh, Evenly. So, this can just force out a good amount of material and negates from uh, your opponent. So, th this helps. And of course, this is just good, at, uh, good going second card in general. So, this is decent. Uh, another card that is kind of decent would be, uh, yeah, Dark Ruler No More. This is just pretty heavy, um, just in the in terms of uh, monster effects, I guess, like or monster kind of interaction, right? A, a lot of people probably won't be going into the trap or any of those like interactions for your bonus turn. They'll probably just be going through combo lines. So in which case, if you drop a Dark Ruler no more, you're just doing better, and your opponent only has their hand cards to uh, rely on. And you can probably win from there. It's not, like, necessarily guaranteed, but... Uh, Dark Ruler no more. Decent. Raigeki, uh, not so much, because um, there is the option to uh, just IP in chain to Raigeki to make, like, a Three mat Apollosa or four mat. It kind of depends on what your opponent ends on, I guess. But uh, assuming that gets done, then what does your Raigeki do for you? Not much. You still have to contend with like three negate Apo. So yeah, that, that's not great. And then uh, if we look at, for example, a like, uh, Vistules, all Vistules uh, just end up like sucking a lot here uh the the one perk of this jewels is that um usually ip will go to the graveyard so you can just bestial the ip so you don't have to deal with ip at least so if you think about it in like that way i guess bestials are pretty all right you know bestials are decent in the sense that they stop the ip but of course, if you consider the fact that this combo is just a one card combo, hmm, I'm having a little bit of doubts about that, but alright, I guess. Then let's see, anything else worth mentioning? So, I, I guess Bistules are not useless against them, but if your opponent were to do an end board different from the IP one, then that's when the Bistules would really fall off, which is probably doable, honestly. So... This still still relevant somehow. They're still kicking. Now that I think about it, if Serenair was limited to one, then does that mean every branded player I've encountered today just happened to open one of Serenair? And one of Branded Fusion? And one of the grass that looks greener? And 60 cards? Wow. That really hurts me. Physically. Mentally. Everything. Alright. So, yeah. Uh, there's also... Uh, I guess, in terms of things you can do, well, just generically, there's deck lockdown, there's like macro type effects if you can run them, so Shifter, Fissure, Macro Cosmos, uh, Dark Law, Arise Heart, all of those are uh, somewhat effective. The ones that are the worst would be probably Arise Heart to an extent, because of Rise Heart is mandatory activation, so you can potentially get really railed by a Kurikara, and that just sucks. Although it's not like guaranteed that you'll get railed, it's still pretty painful, I guess. In terms of like ways to go second against this, well, I mean, Apollosa doesn't, and uh, Promethean Princess doesn't really 
deal with macro that well for you. So just macro centric decks like stun are of course going to do pretty well still. Uh, going first, going second, whatever. So noticeably, a lot of stun players are going to be running this tech. So you're going to be going like into your servant to grab uh, Ecclesia, special summon Ecclesia, grab dogmatic punishment. And of course, this will also allow you to uh, send a copy of either Garura or Entis to remove some cards from your opponent's board or try to build some advantage. So yeah, th this is going to do fairly well. There, there are like variants that can build up like Omni Negates, I guess though, but just in general, just the Deer Servant decks, I guess you, you could call them, are going to end up doing pretty well against this deck. Notably because uh, you generally don't need to commit monsters to the board with a good amount of these decks and being so backrow centric Promethean Princess doesn't really work out that great. IP can make Unicorn, I guess, but that, well, assuming you're going second, right? You have six cards, set five, pass. Now you have four back row instead of five if they uh, Unicorn you. So still doing pretty well overall, I'd say. In terms of uh, other weaknesses, that well, that there aren't that many, right? So let, let's assume you're playing, I don't know, maybe Zodiac, for example. If you were to do a normal summon with just, I, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but they're all the same. So you normal summon a Zodiac, then your opponent can immediately Unicorn you, but okay, what, what if you Zodiac Mirage now? Well, I, I guess you're, you're maybe okay try to Zeus your opponent now, from here. But Unicorn wasn't the best play against this anyways. I, I don't think, right? Yeah. Well, actually, no way. Barrage isn't enough because Promethean Princess would still be in the graveyard, right? So then Promethean Princess would just pop whatever you special summon, but if you special summon Ram Ram, I guess, then you'd target another Zodiac boss in your graveyard. Special summon it. And then, uh, at this point, maybe you have a play, I guess. So notably, even if your opponent has Avramax for whatever reason here, which they probably don't, uh, assuming they made Avramax, this actually bypasses Avramax effects because this attacks directly, and Avramax's redirect only works if it's uh, uh, an attack against monsters. It will be re redirected, not against players, so direct attacks bypass that. So. Uh, that that tangent aside, yeah. I, I guess Zodiac might be okay, like just for going second into this. If you were playing like blind second Zodiac. You can run Shifter anyway, so yeah. I guess you can run Deck Lockdown Shifter and Macro technically in Zodiac. So yeah, that that would be fine, I guess. Yeah, I see Zodiac doing all right, I guess. And then anything else? So like, notably, they they they're going to be using IP. So Book of Moon not doing so hot here. And yeah, I guess Kaiju's though are going to be decent still. So. If we kaiju the Amblo Ale, that is not bad. That get rid gets rid of the um, the Amblo Ale, but uh, I guess it's also worth mentioning. Amblo Ale has effects as well. It is in fact also a real card. So even if you were to kaiju Amblo Ale, that doesn't do anything. I guess the best play is to probably kaiju IP. So that that'll probably help you out if you run some kaiju's, but not that much surprisingly. <laughs> So, notably, if this card is destroyed, you can target one link three or lower monster in either graveyard. So, Emblow Whale has that effect. And then the other effect, if a link three or lower monster on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, destroy one card on the field. 
So this can actually trigger off of if you destroy IP, I guess, if that ends up happening, or Unicorn, I guess. If Unicorn is made, then you can just lose two cards off of this, which kind of sucks, but whatever. So in general, we're, we're going to have to see how this goes for a while, but yeah, th there's literally no way these cards do not get hit. There's no way they're all staying at 3, like, surely not. And th th this is just kind of just dumb. So if we were to compare this to Super Heavy Samurai, like, we don't have to worry too much about Grand Board, so we just have to worry about what they start, right? So let's say we have three copies of Motorbike, we have three copies of... Uh, Samurai Wagon, we have three copies of uh, Wakarushi, then three copies of Soul Piercer. Do you notice the major difference between the one card combos that uh, Super Heavy Samurai does and the combos that um, the Bell Star Snake Eye do? So the main difference here is going to be that if you noticed, um, Super Heavy Samurai Wagon. This requires you to normal summon Wagon. And Soul Piercer, of course, uh, also requires you to normal summon Soul Piercer. So, if something were to happen to, like, the Soul Piercer or Samurai Wagon, your turn is going to be over, essentially, right? But with, like, Motorbike or uh, Samurai Prodigy Wakushi, these are uh, combos that start off with special summons and don't really require your normal summon per se, right? So if interruptions happen for uh, these guys, uh, you're, you're still okay, right? So of course we have uh, bike add Wakaushi, so it's basically the same thing, right? Same card, so six copies, right? Now go back to Diabell Star. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So all these only special summons. No, uh, no normal summon required. That, that that's a, a good bit stronger, actually. And then let's see, we have Snake Eyes, Flamberg Dragon. Does this do anything? This card is sent from the field. To the graveyard, you can special summon two level one fire monsters from your graveyard. So yeah. Potentially, this card actually allows you to do some funky stuff, I guess. Some funky things. To avoid normal summoning your, like, Snake Eyes cards in hand if you open those. But, uh, yeah. Nine cards versus three. And none of these cards have uh, an effect to, like, special summon or anything, of course, right? So... Uh, well, yeah, needing to normal summon these is not going to be doing you any favors when you look at this in comparison. This is actually somehow more hand trap resistant than Super Heavy Samurai by like miles. So notably, resistance to Droll, resistance to Ash because they're all one guard combos. And also just Imperm as well, you have resistance to that as well. Because once again, mostly special summon. So notably, if we imperm this or we imperm, uh, well, this one wouldn't be imperm. This would probably be uh, something else. Uh, just for example, if normal summon soul piercer and then your opponent activates shifter, there's no play here. I, I guess, but I, I guess shifter is not like the best example for this because shifter also destroys this deck. But the uh, general idea is. Uh, I guess maybe if you get crowed on this after you get ashed on this, there is no extension for you here. So uh, I guess there's that. Scarecrow is actually kind of crazy with Soul Piercer. I guess you, you have that going, but that does take up your normal summon. And this also matters more, uh, I guess. Well, for going second, which this is just innately better for going second because of all the special summonings being done for this, not forcing you to commit normal summon allows you to play around the normal summon more and make it harder to overall stop your plays in comparison to this, right? So, 
let's say normal summon soul piercer return soul piercer to hand with some effect doesn't really matter what it is all right seems you pass turn if we were to for example say i don't know special summon diabell star and then uh, set sinful original sinful spoils at what point can i exactly reasonably uh return a card to my opponent's hand to stop their play well that there isn't a good one honestly i'm pretty sure right yeah not so great he's also sent for cost so that's not gonna help i guess yeah not not really doing so hot here So, in terms of cards that stop uh, the Abel Star, th they also work pretty well against like Super Heavy Samurai and like Labyrinth, especially if you're going first against Labyrinth. Uh, Lockdown it should pretty much always give you the win if you can activate that going first against Lab. And like just a lot of decks don't take well to getting hit by deck Lockdown, so yeah. This just does a lot of work for you, so would recommend it this format. And evenly as well, not bad. It's just good against everything in general. It's just not as good against Super Heavy Samurai, which is an Omni Negate heavy board, in which case, like a Dark Ruler No More would be better against them. But if you're against Back Row, of course, Dark Ruler No More is a useless card. So build your deck with caution, and uh, yeah. That's all I got for you guys um, today, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.